Hello again, this is going to be a follow-up video to my last one where I was spraying a little bit of vegetable oil. Again, all I have here is a motorcycle ignition coil, several capacitors and some diodes in series, and that's generating my high voltage. So I thought what we could do is try to measure how much voltage this thing puts out. The simplest thing to do would just be to determine how far the arc could jump. Once you know that length, you could calculate the voltage. The obvious one would just be to use a voltmeter. Of course, this meter is only rated for a thousand volts DC maximum. You may get away with putting, you know, 12, 1300 volts into a meter like this, but once you exceed that, you run the risk of damaging the meter. So one way to get around that would be to use an attenuator with your meter. This is a homemade one. This is a divide by 10. And I've shown where I've used this up to about 5,000 volts. Again, this is completely potted. It's using high voltage resistors. But to make this particular measurement, even this attenuator would not be good enough. Now another way to do it would be to use your oscilloscope. These are some hand tech probes. This is a PP150. I like these probes a lot. I think I paid like $9 each for these. Now these probes work with the 1 mega ohm input and pins of the scope. And that combined with the 9 mega ohms of the probe gives us an input and pins of 10 mega ohms. Of course if you take a probe like this and exceed what its maximum voltage rating is, you're probably not only going to damage your probe, but you're probably also going to damage the front end of your oscilloscope. So you could use a higher voltage probe. This is one that I've homemade. This is capable of going up to 65,000 volts peak. I think I've tested it up to around 75,000 volts. This probe actually has protection circuitry built into the back end of it. Of course, all of our compensation networks are back here as well. And so if something were to break down inside of this probe, uh, the idea is that this would actually protect the front end of the oscilloscope and return all of our current back to the ground path. Unfortunately, even with this probe being protected, and if the output of that supply were below the 65,000 volts, this probe still wouldn't work for this application. Let me show you why. So let's just measure the input resistance of this probe. You see our Bryman can't even read this. Let's just switch over to Nano Siemens. And you can see it's about 5 Nano Siemens or roughly 200 Mega Ohms. So if I take this probe and apply 100,000 volts across its input, this probe is going to draw about 500 microamps of current. And I can tell you right now, that's too much of a load for the supply that we're trying to measure. So there is another device that we could use to make this measurement. This is an electrostatic field strength meter. You can see it's an auto ranging meter. This particular device was developed by Buford Comstock. It was made for the film industry. When I say film, I'm talking about the companies that produce the film that was used to make movies. And as they're, you know, spooling and unspooling that material, of course it can develop a lot of static buildup. And what would happen is they could end up with a discharge that could start a fire inside of the factory. So they were very interested in trying to find a way to detect if they were having a static buildup and then prevent a fire before it ever started. So the company that he worked for that produced these meters uh, started making a few of them. I guess other industries found out about it. One of them was a factory up in Canada, and I believe that their end product was plywood. They had the same problem where I guess as you process that plywood, it can also build up a lot of static. They actually had a factory that was burned to the ground, I guess. So they approached the company that produced this meter, and then this thing found another application. So these became popular in other areas. So what we're going to be doing is using this today to try to make this measurement. So you can see there's an end cap on the back of this. This just comes off. And you can see these funky shapes in the circuit board. This is spun by a small motor inside the device. And then these two holes here are lights. One of these emits a beam in the vertical axis. The other is in the horizontal. Basically what will happen is we'll have a line like this. And as we slowly bring the meter closer and farther away, we'll end up with the two lines intersecting right in the center, forming an X. And this is just battery operated. You can see it shining the light. And here you can see what I mean with the X. 
course the focal point of that X is very important because this device is dependent on the distance so all I'm going to do is take a piece of circuit board and we'll use this as our target I can lay this inside of this block of wood basically insulate it from the table then we can take our static meter and point that at our circuit board material and I'll hook the power supply between this and just ground it to the bench and that'll work just fine for this demonstration you can see now we're outputting roughly 5,900 volts and you can see the display here is reading 5,840 again let me just go ahead and adjust this down You can see we're at roughly 3,008 volts. You can see our meter is reading 3,010. Again, this is totally non-contact. It is dependent on the distance, so if I were to move this thing closer, you can see the voltage is going up. There's roughly 5,500 volts. So it's very important that the focus is set right. You can see it's jumping around a little bit. So 54.3, 52, 7, 54.6. So just shy of 60,000 volts. It's about right for the coil the way that I've got it set up right now. You can see it slowly dropping. It's about 540 volts across it still. I think that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully I've provided you with enough information where you realize that you can't take a 10x probe like this and expect to hook this up to a high voltage power supply and not damage anything. The same holds true for your meter. Don't expect to hook something like this up to your microwave oven transformer directly or any other high voltage supply source and have the meter live. You know, I've run a lot of tests on various meters over the years and these tests are all about showing the robustness. But again, the transients that I'm applying to these meters, even though some of those are in excess of 10,000 volts, they're very low energy. So my advice is if you're working with voltages that exceed what the value is that's written on the meter, you better have some idea what it is that you're doing or take the risk of damaging your equipment. Again, this device here being totally non-contact, it won't present any kind of a load to your circuit. The downside to using a device like this is that you need a target that's large enough that this can actually detect. Well, that's all for now. Till the next video. Later.